Since getting early access to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Scott and I have really been enjoying our time conquering England, and we're super excited that Ubisoft actually agreed to sponsor some content for the game, including this video. Together we've played almost 200 hours, testing out all the different abilities, playstyles, and weapon loadouts as we pillaged and plundered through every region of the game. In this video, we're going to be giving you our top 4 fun build playstyles. Keep in mind that this list is not in any order, and it is still subjective. You can also combine some of these playstyles together if you desire. Remember to upgrade all of your gear to mythical and if you want to know how to get a certain weapon or piece of armor, just YouTube it as there's heaps of guides out there. Also I'd love to know in the comments what's your favorite playstyle. First up we have the Viper playstyle, which we've named after the character from Game of Thrones who uses a spear in combination with poison. Out of every weapon type we tested, spears came out on top for us by far for pure effectiveness. Spears have ridiculous reach and great speed. This remains the case when you start dual wielding two spears, which is part of the progression for this playstyle, achieved by the special skill called Heavy Dual Wield. While playing with one or two spears, you'll want to do lots of dodging and only parry as a last resort. You can use heavy attacks, but you'll mainly be throwing out light attacks and dodging around the battlefield, carefully choosing when to do the left hand strike, which is a stabbing lunge that impales your opponents before pushing them back onto the ground. It's great to follow this up with a hearty stomp. Due to our choice of skill, skills and abilities, you'll be surrounded by poison very often, and your spear will be coated in it, ensuring enemies are constantly dying one extra point of damage at a time. You can use better spears, but I liked the third spear as it increases speed when dodging, and we dodge lots, and I put in a special rune so that heavy hits on fallen enemies poison them, which is great. I then used the Cadfark spear which looks awesome, and it increases back damage when dodging so it fits well too. I enhanced it further with a special rune that gives it a chance of creating a poison cloud upon a parry. We may not parry that often, but it also works with missile reversal, so it happens often enough. In the video, we use different armors, a Raven Clan set, as well as Brigandine armor, but you may prefer something like the Draga armor set. As for skills, Brush with Death is a staple, as it slows time if you dodge just before an attack lands, after which we'll punish foes with a barrage of stabs. I should mention that all builds should get as many adrenaline slots as possible to use abilities frequently. Ranged ability aren't the focus here, but you'd pick Poisonous Powder Trap and Ranged Poison Strike, and then two of your choice, one probably being Thorn of Slumber, as it's also poison themed. For melee abilities, you'll be beginning many battles with Poison Strike, which poisons the spear in your right hand, and with both ranks you'll splash an arc of poison affecting foes in its range. While a spear's build is not a ranged build, you have the weapon with the longest range, and should keep lots of distance between you and attackers. The Kick of Tear ability can work great, as you can just kick enemies who get too close away. With the second rank they stay down, continuing to die from your poison, ripe to be stomped on, and this is one of the times you will actually want a heavy attack over and over. Vengeance of Thor with both ranks is another nice choice as it lets you deal lots of damage to meteor attackers with a powered up strike. Finally, we think Harpoon Impalement fits the playstyle, and you can use it for crowd control or for depleting boss type enemy health bars by slamming them into walls. The kick ability can also damage enemies by sending them into obstacles. As for the main skills, we mentioned Heavy Jewel Wield, Brush with Death, and Stomp, but there are others to prioritize. From the Raven Tree, there's Counter Roll, which lets you flip over an enemy if you dodge towards them and right before their rune attack lands. Then get Backstab so you can inflict increased defense damage and cause them to stagger when you strike their back. Miasma is fantastic, causing enemies who die from your poison attacks to release a toxic cloud, damaging more enemies. Missile Reversal should also be picked to deal lots of damage and clear off pesky attackers who wouldn't be close enough to be covered in your poison. From the wolf tree, get sprint attack so you can open battles with an agile and powerful strike, as well as battleground bolt. This lets you throw the nearest discarded weapon at an enemy in sight, which is just a very convenient damage dealer and fitting for this ferocious fast type of character. Remember to get as many passive skills as possible, which enhance melee damage, particularly light damage, poison damage, and poison buildup and poison resistances. I'm also going to recommend every build except perhaps the Berserker, if you really don't want to, picks up Advanced Assassination and Chain Assassination for the convenience of taking out two tough enemies in one fell swoop with timing-based attacks. Perfect Attack is a pretty solid all-rounder skill for builds too. The second fun build playstyle on this list is a Master Ranger. You could also call it a Battle Archer as the focus isn't on stealth. While many people will experience Assassin's Creed Valhalla with an axe gripped firmly in each hand, this playstyle opts for pinpoint accuracy and constant use of all 
three bows. You can really play through this game using the bow very often so long as you set it up right with heaps of adrenaline slots and prioritize abilities intelligently. Each type of bow, light predator and hunter uses a different type of ammo so if you're ever out of arrows you can switch bow type two more times and you're still good to go. Do keep in mind that obviously at the start of the game when your character is more of a blank canvas you'll have to use your backup melee weapons often. You can't be fresh out of Norway expecting to shoot arrows most of the time but as you level up you'll be able to rely on your bows more and more. As for the bows you're using I'm using the bullseye predator bow which automatically spawns a trap upon a stealth headshot kill and for the hunter bow I love the look of the arc of Ilan. Each successive hit temporarily increases ability damage up to 10 times. Primarily I use a light bow as there's so many on offer. People seem to love Skadi's wrath which I used for most of the game and it increases crit chance when hitting weak points. I also found Hunbert's bow to be quite nifty but then later in the game I found this powerful bow called death scald. It increases crit chance the lighter you are. It just seems to have really nice stats too overall. There's a few fitting armors in the game such as the huntsman set but in the video footage I'm using the raven clan armor and sometimes magister's armor for the full set bonus it grants of improved ranged damage. With ranged abilities don't limit yourself to four slots but definitely keep focus of the Nornir and mark of death on hand. Focus of the Nornir puts enemies in slow motion helping you to rapidly target and shoot foes for quite a chunky period of time. With both ranks each enemy killed increases damage dealt. Remember you can use ranged abilities with an adrenaline slot even if you run out of arrows. I recommend opening battle with focus of the Nornir and a light bow because you can just kill so many enemies and then still have a full quiver of arrows ready when it times out. You can even just use it again straight away if you want to. Mark of Death also uses a kind of auto targeting. You mark sighted enemies even multiple times on each and then let fly a deadly volley of arrows. As for the other two slots you'll likely end up using some of the poison and fire based strike abilities but there's no strict slot recommendations here. For example it doesn't make sense to run around with piercing strike which lets you shoot a target through a wall or obstacle with more damage if you line up more enemies with one shot but you'll still end up using it sometimes. I actually like to use man's best friend with many builds including this one as having a wolf fight by your side is not only useful but feels really cool for the character. Of course other abilities can be used as needed. As an archer you'll mostly use your bow but of course you'll have those melee weapon slots that you may as well fill. You can choose these by implementing another playstyle from this list or whatever you like. Your melee abilities will be similar to that of the viper playstyle as you want to create distance between you and enemies. Therefore kick of tear is great. Harpoon impalement is also good for boss fights and also to fling targets away from you. Throwing axe fury is also solid and for the fourth slot I'd go with fire or poison strike honestly just in case you have to beef up your melee a bit. As for main skills from the bear tree get light bow combo so consecutive shots with a light bow deal extra damage and arrow volley. This lets you shoot multiple arrows at once but obviously drains arrows quicker. You tend to use it when you need fast damage and can't use an adrenaline based ability instead. From the raven tree get those assassination ones we talked about and also missile reversal so you can send projectiles back at foes. Very fitting for a master ranger to catch an enemy arrow. Also brush with death is helpful to slow time against melee attackers so you can run away and have time to shoot lots of arrows. Getting predator bow combo is also good to wear down a single opponent making headshots do consecutive damage. With guided arrow you can gain some control over its trajectory. This build will want lots of battlefield awareness so you will be using Odin's sight plenty but do pick up stealth recon from the wolf tree to automatically highlight enemies when crouched and undetected. Also in this tree charged shot will let you fire two charged arrows with the hunter bow and bow to melee link means alternating between bow and melee attack steals extra damage for a short time. At time, melee will be forced onto you by attackers, so this helps you to get back to bow usage with even more power. Hunter bow combo is also desired. Release your arrow as you finish drawing it to make the next one draw faster. Arrow reinforcement makes arrows unbreakable and collectible from fallen enemies. And finally, bow stun finisher can be unleashed at a stunned enemy's head, but this one is more of a cool choice rather than a foundational one.
The third playstyle on our list is for a Viking Berserker. We found using a Danax to be best for creating the gnarly gritty feel we were going for. You'll be slashing down everything in your path, stomping on heads and throwing torches to burn down every building possible during raids and assaults. You'll be spreading flames around with your axe too, a whirlwind of fire, blood and fury. This playstyle embodies the idea of the ultimate rage fueled Viking Raider. You'll utilize dodging a lot, but unlike the Viper, you'll be parrying more to deal damage back to enemies and you'll opt for more high octane abilities. You can wear the Berserker armor and heaps of tattoos with this one if you want, or something like the Thor armor set. Berserker armor increases speed when taking damage until you heal, and the bonus grants an increase to attack and armor. Anything bear clan aligned would be great, although for the video I actually used the Sepulchre axe, because it ignites after critical hits, which added to all the fire, as well as Lagatha's axe, which increases critical damage when surrounded by more than three enemies, and I just love the aesthetic. I also slotted in a special rune so that heavy hits set fallen enemies on fire. Similarly to our Viper Spears playstyle, the Berserker will eventually opt for dual wielding two-handed axes, but in situations where more speed is desired, you can actually switch back to just one. You'll begin battles by tearing through foes with sprinting attacks and setting your weapon ablaze. If you're using one axe, you can throw plenty of heavy attacks into the mix with your light attacks, and if you hold left attack, you'll do a spinning attack, hitting multiple targets in your reach. When dual wielding, heavy attacks can be used, but they are much slower, so light attacks will become your common damage dealer here. Abilities will be chosen that are super aggressive to create the most intense feel possible. Things like Rage of Helheim to tackle targets to the floor and punch and headbutt them into the dust. Rush and Bash will be implemented to tackle and throw foes off ledges and cliffs, or to take them straight into a wall and follow up with the second rank axe strike. Fire Strike is also a staple. You'll use it to ignite your weapon and burn an arc around you to hit foes in its range. For the fourth slot, Vengeance of Thor can be great to deliver a devastating axe strike, but you can switch in other things like Kick of Tear if you want some This Is Sparta type action. We won't use ranged abilities much, but if you want to, you'd be going with ranged Fire Strike and Incendiary Powder Trap for more fire, and then purely to fit the theme, I'd be going with Axe Blizzard and probably Man's Best Friend. As for skills, most come from the Bear Tree. Get Stomp for obvious reasons, as well as Berserker's Metal so that taking damage doesn't cause adrenaline loss. Heavy Jewel Wield of course, and I like to get Terror as well. After a stun finisher, weak enemies nearby may cower in fear. You'll also want parry damage to deal damage back on attackers as well as Adrenaline Fiend. When one or more Adrenaline slots are filled, you gain a damage boost and attack speed boost. Where the Viper had Miasma, the Berserker has Battlefield Cremation. Enemies who perish from one of your fire attacks will continue to burn, dealing fire damage to enemies nearby. I also like Warrior Takedown, where you can press heavy attack to quickly kill an unaware enemy. It alerts enemies around you, but will help fuel your adrenaline. From Raven, get Brush with Death again, and other convenient skills mentioned at the start of the video. The Wolf Tree has Sprint Attack, so we'll definitely want that, as well as Battleground Bolt to throw discarded weapons. I'd also recommend getting Grit, to regain the red portion of your health bar when landing successful melee hits back on enemies. This playstyle is very aggressive, so anything to help with health is always handy. And now we come to the final fun playstyle on this list, and that is the Assassin. Sure, the game is fast-paced, and you're encouraged to play like a ferocious ferocious viking, but if you want to, there's heaps of opportunity for assassin-like gameplay, and I know this because I've dedicated 30 hours to testing and implementing a stealthy assassin playstyle. As an assassin, you'll be quite versatile, using melee weapons as well as your bow, but you want to make your hidden blade the main weapon. Prioritize stealth whenever possible, carefully infiltrate places to take out heaps of enemies before calling in your vikings to finish the raid. Use your cloak and every ability and skill at your disposal to remain undetected. Hide bodies and bring enemies to you by whistling from haystacks or bushes. You'll want to get as many buffs to stealth and assassination damage as possible, and using the advanced assassination timer will become a main part of your experience, as well as chain assassination to follow up with an axe throw. But don't always use the axe. Sometimes take it slow and remove one enemy at a time to avoid being seen. As for weapons, you'll utilize a predator bow when you need precision and power to take out targets from afar. You can use a light bow in combat if you happen to be forced into it, such as in main story boss battles. I recommend dual wielding two daggers for this one. The light attack should be used to rapidly wear down foes, but you can often get them into a constant stagger by holding left attack, which thankfully ends with a dual slash as you jump away, creating distance. Daggers are really fun, but you have to be meticulous about closing the gap between you and enemies when you want to attack. Heavy attacks also work really well with daggers because they're still very fast. I recommend using Satunga's Claw and Coppice. Coppice restores small 
small amounts of health for each critical hit, which is great for recovery, and the claw increases critical damage after each hit, stacking up to 10 times. You'll want to wear a set of raven-based armor to be most effective. Magister's set also fits here, as it increases melee damage at night, and there's that ranged bonus too. It's also a set of robes worn by a 5th century hidden one, which is nice, but feel free to use something else, like the hidden one's armor set, if desired. As for abilities, there's lots to choose from. Let's talk ranged first. Raven Distraction is a good one here to distract your enemies while you sneak up for assassinations. With both ranks, Sunan will actually attack the target to distract them, and in combat, stuns the target. Man's Best Friend is also solid as you can use it from stealthy cover without being detected. Thorn of Slumber can also be used to put a group of enemies to sleep, which is great if there's an area that you just can't sneak past, and you can use the opportunity for more assassinations. Finally, Mark of Death to hit multiple enemies with a volley of arrows is great when there's a group of weak enemies who will all die at once from this attack. They won't be detecting you or ringing any warning bells anytime soon. On the topic of bows, be sure to shoot fire pots to cause explosions or shoot down heavy materials held up by ropes to flatten enemies beneath. As for melee abilities, Blinding Rush is a must-have staple for any assassin playstyle. You use stamina to move undetected, and it ends upon enemy conflict, but with both ranks, assassination doesn't interrupt it, so you can actually stream multiple assassinations together. It's good to use in combat sometimes too if you need it to escape, as everything just slows down and you'll feel much faster. The other melee abilities are used if you get caught. Things like Poison Strike, which is a nice damage add in boss fights, as well as Harpoon impalement which fits the assassin theme. You can also use it to pull foes closer to you and into the tight range of your daggers. You can pick up something more combat oriented that still fits the theme like Dive of the Valkyries or Throwing Axe Fury but I thought Feign Death was a pretty fun final choice for playing the assassin. With both ranks you can trigger a surprise assassination. As for skills from the bear tree I'd recommend getting Lightbow Combo just so that if you ever do get in combat and want to quickly shoot down a foe you can do so knowing consecutive shots deal extra damage. I'd also recommend Adrenaline Fiend so that you get more damage and attack speed when you have more adrenaline slots filled. From Raven, absolutely get backstabbed to deal more defense damage and cause stagger after you hit enemies in the back right after using counter roll to dodge towards them and flip over them when they use a rune attack. Brush with Death is mandatory to really take time to get close to attackers after dodging and definitely add in Guided Arrow to control the Predator Bow Arrow trajectory. Breakfall is another good option to reduce fall damage so you can jump off taller things as you use the verticality of environments to your advantage. And of course we're getting those chain and advanced assassination skills. Get missile reversal again so you can take out attackers without having to run all the way to them before resuming stealth. You'll also want Assassin's Cantrip to drop a smoke bomb after a successful parry if desired, useful for escaping back into a hidden position. From Wolf, get Stealth Recon to highlight enemies when sneaking undetected and Emergency Aim so if you want to you can snap your aim to an enemy as they detect you, giving you an opportunity to kill them and remain hidden. I personally like having Battleground Bolt here as well and Bow to Melee Link just because they both increase damage output in situations you can end up in if caught. Finally, Stealth Adrenaline Adrenaline can be picked to gain adrenaline when you loot a chest or pickpocket in a restricted area. It just sets you up nicely for battle in case you do have to reveal yourself. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of our top 4 fun build playstyles for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. As you can see, it turns out dual wielding is pretty good if you know how to use it. These archetypes may not sound as unique as holding a flail in one hand and a hammer in the other, but I genuinely found them to be the most fun in the long term and very effective. If you've played the game by now, I'd love to know what you think in the comments below. A massive thank you to those who watched the video this far. If you want to, please do give this video a like, and if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing if you're keen for Elder Scrolls content and videos for Cyberpunk which we'll be covering upon release. Social media links are in the description as always. My name is Michael, and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon. Wait, okay.